Hi, my name's Joe. Welcome to the channel where I help you make better coffee and give you honest reviews. Today I am reviewing the Eureka Mignon Specialita. So um, this grinder is kind of prolific. It's been around for a little while and it's it's been very, very popular in the espresso community as of late. I purchased one because I have a Barazza Sete and the Sete is extremely loud. This, on the other hand, is one of the quietest grinders in the category. So I thought, you know what, let me just go from one end of the spectrum all the way to the other end and see if we can get a grinder that is as good or better and quieter. So this is what I landed on. So I'm going to give you um, a few different um, points on this. I'm going to go through a couple of tests and then I'll give you a final score on this grinder. Um, I'm going to give it a score for two different markets, though because in the United States, this retails for around $700 to $750, whereas over in Europe, this retails for what I've been told around $400. So it is a pretty big difference in price. So I think that that will kind of sway my opinion on, you know, if you're in one market or the other on the value of this machine. All right, before we get into the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, because if you do, you will get entered to win our very new coffee. This is my own coffee brand, Veracali Coffee. It is blended specifically for espresso. It's a Brazilian and um, Ecuadorian blend. So we are gonna give away a bag of this, and we also are gonna give away a Mer or Mir, I don't know how to pronounce it, um, double-walled stainless steel vacuum whatever cup so yeah it's very very nice so we're going to give away for the first winner the number one winner they're going to get this and then we're going to have a secondary class of winners we're going to give away uh, a second place and third place are going to get some cups from the pioneer collective coffee if you haven't checked out the video that i've shown about their um very cool cafe definitely do that all right so to enter to win all you have to do is Comment in the video below and go ahead and like the video and subscribe. That'll get you entered. And then we're going to take the drawing on the 30th of October, and then you'll be entered in to win all these goodies. So let's get into the video. All right, so the first test I'm going to do is grind out some coffee, and we're going to test the um, amount that comes out. So it's set on a couple of websites that this runs at the highest level of 1.8 grams per second. Uh, in the espresso range on this uh, Specialita. So I went ahead and did that, and I did that test four times to uh, also see the variation in uh, amounts. And it actually was higher than 1.8. So we got 16 the first time, we got 16 and a half the second time, the third time we got 17 grams, and then the last time we got 16.7 grams. So that is a variation of about a full gram. Generally, my recommendation is you don't do um, more than 0.5. That's uh, right when you start to see maybe some differences in flavors and flow. Um, once you get a full gram over, you're definitely gonna see a little bit of difference in flow. So um, it's not bad, it's a good starting place. Uh, so 8.3 for me was you know generally between 16 and 17 grams but just realize that you, you do have a gram variation, so it might not be a bad idea to actually weigh those out. Um, so the other thing too with that, at 17 grams, I would say that was the top end. So if you do the math, so that's about two grams per second. So it's a little bit higher than the actual rated um, amount that they put on their website, which maybe is a good thing, maybe a bad thing, but just realize that it does have that variation of about one gram. Um, the next thing we're going to do is just take a look at the clumping. So let me show you that. All right, so you're not going to be able to see it here. So I'm going to show a couple pictures and stuff of the um, grinds. And it is actually very clumpy. That was probably the biggest um, drawback of this machine is that you really have to use a WDT method on this. And I know people swear by that on every grinder, but I prefer if the grinder does most of the declumping itself. And in this case, it really doesn't do that at all. So there is a lot of like, like little coffee snowballs running around on this uh, plate and it does clump a lot. So I will say 
for the price, if you are in the $700 range, um, something like the, the Sete 270 WI definitely has way less clumping um, than this uh, grinder. All right, so we had about 16 grams in and we got about 38 grams out, which is a pretty good, you know, one to two ratio. Um, you know, using this, you do have to, especially with the, with the Bambino, you definitely have to weigh everything. You really, it, it, it's a little bit more cumbersome to dial in than something that doesn't have a super accurate uh, push out because when you have a gram, uh, and in some cases I actually, in, while I was doing this, had it like 1.5 grams higher, you definitely have to keep track of that because your flow is going to definitely change when you jump that much. So, you know, make sure you are weighing your stuff out. Um, and yeah, let me do a couple sips and I'll tell you what I think. I mean, as far as the build quality goes, the build on this is it's really good. The coffee's really great. I mean, the, um, it, it weighs probably like twenty. I can tell that sometimes pounds. that bouldering, like some of those, it's a beast. Um, big clumps. Um, everything about it is a little really bit nice. Over extraction. There's a little bit. You more have the metal. I'm used I'm to when I use the Sete um, or some other grinders like the Niche. But overall, it's a pretty nice grinder. The 55 millimeter burr set in here is made of steel. It's pretty high end. I like it a lot. It, the downside with 55 though is it's not quite as standard as 64. 64 millimeter is one of those burr sets that you can change out pretty easily and find really high end burrs at that at that size. Um, but the XL is what they reserve that for. So if you do want something with you know aftermarket burr sets, go with that. Um, as far as the other build pieces, this this here is it's okay. It's not my favorite way of like moving this around for putting a um, a porta filter in, but it does a pretty good job. And the the piece up here does a good job of keeping it all together. I've actually been able to move it down low enough that you can also fill fit a uh, like a porta filter with the funnel on top as well. So overall, I mean, this is the best built grinder I've used to date. I'm sure there are better built ones. But this has a really nice, elegant look. It goes really nice with any house as it comes in many colors and everything. And it really just is a, a sturdy grinder. And I think that's why so many people love this grinder is just the look, the feel, and you know, just how heavy it is and how industrial it is. But with that said, I'm gonna give it a score. And I'm gonna give this a, two different scores, like I said. For the European market, I'm gonna give it 8.5 because at 400 bucks or I've heard some people say like 350 this is an amazing grinder I mean the build quality is incredible for that price now for the United States market I'm gonna kind of knock it down to like a probably like a 6.8 um, yeah about a 6.8 maybe a 7 um, just because the grind quality I think could be a little bit better the clumping issue is kind of a big pain um, and expecting everybody to have to WDT and everything is, is not super widely accepted yet. A lot of, you know, beginners and a lot of people that just haven't been doing it that long don't do that. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it is an extra process. It takes a little bit longer and it's kind of, um, a little bit of a messy process too, cause you have to like kind of switch the grinds around. So it's just a lot of tools you have to keep. So I, it's nice for grinders that are good enough at declumping that you don't have to use it. And that's why I'm giving it a little bit lower score because in the United States, you can get something like the 270, which the Sate 270, which retails at 399. So um, yeah, I think it's an overall great grinder. If you have any questions about it, or if you have a recommendation for the next grinder, cause I'm pretty sure my camera wife wants a quieter grinder. So if you have any recommendations there, shoot them in the comments because I'd love to, to find the next grinder to review for you. All right, catch you in the next one. Thanks.